church but before we sit down there's a powerful confession that we make in this church but how many people know that sometimes you make a confession ever so often that you loses its essence it loses its meaning in this church we always say our God is good and kind to us but sometimes you don't even believe it any longer because you've said it so often. But I'm here to renew your mind as you leave 2023 and go into 2024. In Hebrews 6, 17, when God desired to show more convincingly to his heirs, which is you and I, of the promise, which is the word of God, of, of his unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed with it, guaranteed it with a seal, with an oath. And in Hebrews 6, 18 tells us that by two immutable things, which is the oath and the promise, for which it is impossible for God to lie, we will have come to seek refuge. We can be consoled that whatever God says that he will do, he will do. And so with a renewed mind, I want you to convincingly tell yourself that my God is good and kind to me. You can say that as many times as you can in three seconds. My God is good and kind to me. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You're welcome to church this morning. You couldn't have chosen a better time to be in service. Today is our carol Sunday. Praise the Lord. And if you're tuning in online, you're welcome, welcome. And we're glad because we know that the same carol, the same power that is available in this service will touch you wherever you are. Hallelujah. It is reset, reset 31st of July of December. I'm already thinking about January. Reset is 31st of December at 9 p.m. Reset will be happening here live. But guess what? If you live around Globe Motors where the HQ is, there is a viewing center as well. So you can also watch Reset at the Globe Motors as well. But it will be here majorly on the 31st of December at 9 p.m. Make sure you're here early so that you can secure a spot. And today is our carol service hallelujah so if you missed um the wonderful carol production last week this is your opportunity so congratulations and clap for yourselves um nlp continues tomorrow at 6 30 a.m invite everyone you know you can even host a watch party you can decide to stream with your friends and just have a good time at NLP I have been a product of NLP and I'm sure there are so many people in this room as well that have been products of NLP hallelujah hallelujah so I mean, I need you to fix your eyes to the screen. There are further announcements um, that you would need for the course of the week. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Harvesters, and a merry, merry Christmas to you. As always, it's a privilege to have you seated here this morning. And very quickly, let's run you through the amazing things we have planned for the week. 
Settle 2024 comes up on the 29th of December and time is 6.30 a.m. daily. It will be power-packed prayer and fasting that will settle everything that concerns your finances, relationships, academics, career, spiritual life, family, health, and every other aspect of your life. Don't miss it. And after that, we'll be ending the year 2023 and starting off the new year 2024 at Reset, our special end-of-year service. This is the best way to start your new year strong and set yourself up for a wonderful 2024. Time is 9 p.m. Wine Press 2024. Come January, all roads lead to Tafawa Balewa Square, Onikon, Lagos Island. From Wednesday 24th to Friday 26th of January, it promises to be a time of spiritual renewal, worship, spiritual encounters, and breakthroughs as we come together to celebrate our faith. You don't want to miss it. Scan the QR code to register to attend and to volunteer. Once again, compliments of the season to the Vestas family.
Good morning, church. Have you said compliments of the season and Merry Christmas to your neighbor? Thank you for doing that. Can you please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 1? And I'll be reading from verse 1 through to 21. And I'll be reading from the Passion Translation. During those days, the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus ordered that the first census be taken throughout his empire. Quirinius was the governor of Syria at that time. Everyone had to travel to their hometown of their family to complete this mandatory census. So Joseph and his wife Mary left Nazareth, a village in Galilee, and journeyed to their hometown in Judea, to the village of Bethlehem, King David's ancient home. They were required to register there, since they were both direct descendants of David. Mary was pregnant and nearly ready to give birth. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Mary went into labor. And there she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped the new baby, the newborn baby, in strips of clothes. And Mary and Joseph laid him in a feeding trough, since there was no available space in any upper room in the village. That night, in a field near Bethlehem, shepherds were watching over their flocks. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lightening up the field with the blazing glory of God. And the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid, for I have come to bring you good news. The most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere. You would recognize him by this miraculous sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of clothes and lying in the feeding trough. That's a manger. Then all at once in the night sky, a vast number of glorious angels appeared. The very armies of heaven and they all praised God, saying, Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. When the choir of angels disappeared and returned to heaven, the shepherds, hallelujah, when the choir of angels disappeared and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go. Let's hurry and find this word who is born in Bethlehem and see for ourselves what the Lord has revealed to us. So they hurried up and found the way to Mary and Joseph. And there the baby was lying in a feeding trough. Upon seeing these miraculous signs, the shepherds recounted what just happened. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story were astonished by what was told. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart and often pondered what they meant. The shepherds returned to their flock ecstatic over what had happened. They praised God and glorified him for all they had seen for themselves, just like the angels had said. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. And as we celebrate Christmas, above the whole merriment and jollofing, Jesus indeed is the reason for this season. And when he came, he, you're so special to him that he had to come in the flesh. The king of kings and lord of lords. I remember when Pastor Bology said something. He said, we all can choose where, you know, who our parents are. But Jesus chose to come through Mary and Joseph. Poor, didn't have so much. But the Bible says that though he was poor, yeah, through his poverty that I might become rich. And so he's the best gift and the reason and the center for this season. And he's a demonstration of the love of God for you and me. And so today, above all the festivity and all of that, can we extend God's love to everyone that is around you? Let them experience the true meaning of Christmas through you. 
through the way you love, through the way you give, and through the way you behave. And I know that God will bless us as we continue in this service. Merry Christmas once again. shall continuously be in my mouth. With this understanding, I want you to open up your mouth and extol the Lord.
You deserve my praise. What is your name? What is your name? The host of heaven adore you. Angels bow at your throne before you. The 24 elders, they bow, they cast their crowns. They cast their crowns. They cast their crowns. Thank you, Lord.
head and begin to praise the Lord. The one that this kind God, they said we search and search. There is no God like our God. Can you lift up your voice this morning and begin to exalt the name of Jesus? His name is the name above all names. He said at the mention of Jesus, every name shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Can we begin to exalt him? He's the God that is bigger than the biggest. Our salvation, our deliverer, our redeemer, our friend, the one that loves us, the one that holds us together. Can you begin to exalt him? This guy, God, another one all day. Anabradosh, mighty God, mighty in battle, doing wonders, the one that fights our battles. We praise you. Everything within us praises you. Our lifetime will praise you. Our resources will praise you. Our God, the ark of our lives. Thank you, Lord. Can you begin to thank the Lord for the progress you have made so far? If you got a promotion this year, can you thank the Lord? If you have an answered prayer, can you thank the Lord? If you got approval, can you thank the Lord? If your wife got pregnant, can you thank the Lord? If you got engaged, can you thank the Lord? And I'm a host, this my God, bigger than the biggest, mightier than the mightiest, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, wonderful counselor, our maker, the beginning and the end. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we are so grateful. Who are we that you are mindful of us? Some people, things are going bad for them. But we, when we review 2023, we have cause to thank the Lord. I abound the brothers, not because we have two heads or because we are more knowledgeable, but because of his mercy. Can you lift up your hands and say, my father, my father, I thank you for the progress I've made so far. My father, my father, thank you for walking behind the scene. My father, my father, thank you for your love. My father, my father, thank you for your mercy. My father, my father, thank you for your preservation. My father, my father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for unmerited favor. Thank you for mercy. The things I deserved, they didn't come to me because of your mercy. Oh, Father, we'll come to give you praise. Oh, Father, we are so grateful. We that you have loved, we that you have preserved, we are the ones that have come back to give you all the praise and all the glory. We see you at work. Father, we see you at work. And we thank you because you are working everything out for our good. In the name of Jesus. Can we turn our Bibles very quickly? We're going to pray. From the book of Isaiah 49, verse 13 to 18, 16 rather, 13 to 16. Scripture says, Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth. It says, Break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord had comforted his people. If you know the Lord has comforted you this year, can you shout a big amen? amen. Scripture says, And you will have mercy upon this affliction. Then verse 14 then says, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. Maybe you're here and you feel like the Lord has forsaken you. He's just saying that, Lord, the things that I asked you for in 2023 has not happened. He says that, and the Lord had forgotten me. And then the Lord answered and says in verse 16, he says, can a woman forget her suckling child? He says that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yeah, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. You're going to pray, my father, my father. My father, my father. Concerning the issues remaining. But that solve it for me. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, faithful is he that has promised. My father, my father. Because you're not slack. Concerning your promise. Lord, we're asking for an 11th hour miracle. 
solve the issue in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. This morning we're praying, Father, concerning this issue. Thank you because you do not forget me. He says, the eyes of the Lord are constantly towards me. He says, your ears are open towards me. I shall take a brother coast. Lord, we're asking. Lord, we're asking. Lord, we're asking. That you step in, that you will step in, that you will step in, you will step in, you will step in in the name of Jesus. You are going to declare, Lord, step in, Lord, step in, Lord, step in. This year there is no carry over, Lord, step in. This year there is no carry over. Father, we thank you. Because you're not slack concerning your promises yes, towards Lord. us. Woo. We're agreeing together this morning. Yes, Lord. That that which is left, Lord, that you will step in. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. On behalf of your people, I receive a miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They will say, yes, he was remaining some days in 2023. Amen. But the Lord showed up strong. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we are asking in this year 2023, for your people, there will be no carryover. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That amen needs some from power. There will be no carry over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Concerning your letter of congratulations, there will be no carry over Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If he has said it, yeah. he will bring it to pass. Yeah. He said the small shall become the mighty. He said I, the Lord, will hasten it. I declare for the remaining of the days of this year that the Lord will hasten it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, thank you, because we know you have heard us. Yeah. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can you celebrate Jesus in the house? Hallelujah. Before you have your seat, it is Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Can you find five people and wish them a Merry Christmas? You know, give them a hug. Tell them that this is Christmas. Christmas, Mass. Christmas. This is for us. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry, I thought there were some Christmas songs that will be going on. Yeah, please, can you go around? Don't be in a hurry to sit. Go around now. Let's hug ourselves. We are sitting already. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I hope there is food in your house. There is no food in my house. So I'm happy to be invited. Anybody want to invite me? You want to invite me? Please, I'm happy. We are plenty in my family, though. But we will not eat a lot. But we at least we want three cost meal. Yeah, we eat like kings. So anybody want to invite us? Uh, uh Oh, my brother, thank you. Please, I would like to come. Please celebrate the brother that invited me. Thank you so much. I would like to come to your house. Merry Christmas, everyone. What a joy. It is our season. Somebody say it is our season. Amen. I think I, I thought I had some Christmas gifts. All right, we have some Christmas. It's Christmas. It's time for giving, giving gifts. Please check under your chair. You might have a Christmas gift under your chair. Please check, check, check. If you find one, can you raise it up? I'm checking under my chair. Oh, I can see a Christmas gift under my chair. Oh, oh my sister found one. Fantastic, fantastic. Any other person find a Christmas gift? Oh, fantastic. You found one. Oh, beautiful. Please, can you celebrate? This is family. This is family. Amen. Amen. If you brought the Christmas gift for someone, it's a good time to also give the person. You know, today is gift sharing. Oh, we all came empty handed. We brought something. If you want to move around and share your Christmas gift, that's fine. And Chuma, you're holding the Christmas gift. I have some Christmas gifts. What should I give? Ah, uh, why do? <laughs> All right, so if today is your birthday, I know. <laughs> so, no, no. Anybody that today is their birthday? Oh, my sister, please come, come, come. Today is her birthday. Awesome. Please, can you celebrate her as she comes? Happy birthday. 
from us to you with so much love. Happy birthday, ma. All right, it's, today's your wedding anniversary. Do I have anybody? Today's your wedding anniversary. Keep all this. Ah! <sighs> Fantastic. Where is your wife? She's not here. Oh, congratulations. Amen. Okay, I have two more. If we were. <laughs> If your, if your birthday is tomorrow, can I say? All right, fantastic. Please come, come, come. Please celebrate her. In my culture, they call them Abiodun. Yes. Happy birthday, darling. Amen. So we are sharing gifts because why? Because Christ, because God gave us a gift. And that is why it is Christmas, right? Fantastic. Can we, can we um, very quickly... Um, I know it's a Christmas special service, you know, so we have a very short time to share the word in 10 minutes. And so we just really want to quickly talk about the birth of Christ and the reason for the season. Somebody say, I am the reason for the season. All right, so very quickly, can you turn with me to the book of Isaiah 9 verse 6? Scripture says... For a child has been born for us. This is the message version, please. It says, for a child has been born for us. It says, the gift of a son for us. It says, he will take over the running of the world. His names will be amazing counselor, strong God, eternal father, prince of wholeness. I love that. Prince of wholeness. Hmm. So if you are looking for how to be whole, there is a father that is the prince of wholeness. He says his ruling authority will grow and there will be no limit to the wholeness he brings. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. And you know, well, when it's Christmas, we all give gifts, right? You know, some of us give gifts to our clients and to our friends, you know. But the size of the gift that we give is based on your, how you perceive the person or how heavy or how important that person is. So, for instance, I go to Pastor Toyin's house and I see her son, Jomiloju. And I say, oh, Jomiloju, take 1,000 naira. And Jomiloju is very excited. Ah, I have to get me 1,000 naira. I want to go and buy ice cream. And he goes and meets his mom. And then I get to Pastor Toyin and I say, ah, Pastor Toyin, Merry Christmas. I cannot give her that same 1,000 naira because it's an insult on her, on her honor. A whole pastor to him. You know, because of, of who she is, there is no way that I can give her that 1,000. And so even if I wanted to give her a cash gift, I would not count the money I give her. I would have packaged it well and say, Pastor, this is for you. Yes or yes? And so because it was, it was us, and because we are the glory of his creation, God wanted to bless humanity. And then he said to himself, that, what can I possibly give these people? You know, they are so important to me. You know, he couldn't find anything to give. He decided to give us himself. He says that they are the, glo my, the glory of my creation. They deserve nothing less but myself. And so the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. And so it was his only begotten son. And not because Jesus is any lesser than God. You know that they are same. He decided to do what? To give himself to us. And when he did this, you know, even the angels had to say, uh uh, why are these people? What is so particular, so special about them that even us, we are taking commandments from them? And then they said in Psalms 8, it says that who is man that you are so mind? Your mind is full of them. He says that you have even exalted them, you've made them lower than Elohim, lower than you. He says, you're giving them authority over everything. And so the creation was wondering that you and I, how come God chose us? And, and, you know, he became very particular about us and decided to give us himself. Somebody say amen. amen. He decided to give us himself because we are that valuable to him. And so imagine that I give Pastor Tola a car. 
And so I've given him a car. A car is great. Maybe Lexus, Super Sports, all of those cars. But then, that is good. But if I give Pastor Tola myself, I've given him everything. And so God looked at us. I said, I'm going to give these people my everything. And today, you and I, the cocoa of the matter is, the season is special, not because it's Christmas. The season is special because of you. You are the reason for the season. The season, you know, is designed because God has chosen us. It's special. So, while we want to say, oh, Christmas, if there was no you, there would be no Christmas. We are the ones that are too valuable, too weighty. You know, when it, in my language, they say, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We are too weighty. And so God decided, and guess what? If it was only one person here, God would have still showed up. Why? Because he loved us, and he gave us a son. And a lot of people pay lip service to, I love, I love. But really, he was the only one that decided to come for us. Somebody say amen. amen. I want us to look at this scripture in Psalm 138. Verse 13 to 18, it's um, in the Passion Translation. Psalm 139. You know, and this is, this is us. Hallelujah. It says, I need it on the screen, please. Psalm 139, verse 13, the Passion Translation. Scripture says, you formed my innermost being. You shaping me, my you shaping my delicate inside. This is God, and my intricate outside, and you wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. I love that. So when people say they don't understand me, it's okay. The Lord made me mysteriously complex because He's the only one that can understand. He says everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. He looked at me and he says, I am marvelously breathtaking. Look at your neighbor and say, you are breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body. When you created me in the secret place, I love this. You carefully, Hakamanasha, you carefully. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, maybe we're a mistake. Or maybe my parents were done having children and then they just had me. Nonsense. He says, He carefully, skillfully, you shaped me. What, 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 what a beauty. How special can you get? This is you. How special can you get? It says from nothing to something. Verse 16 says, you saw, who, you saw who you created me to be before I came, before I became me. Before I do, I, I'd ever seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. He says, every single moment, Hayakamanasha, are you looking at the scripture? He says, every single moment you are thinking of me. Ha <laughs> ha, good God. He says, every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thoughts. We are valuable. We are special. And it came because we are valuable. It came because we are special. Hallelujah. Wow. The Bible says that his eyes are constantly on me. It says that his ears are constantly open towards me. What a good God. And sometimes life wants to throw life at us. We need to remember that we are valuable. Hallelujah. You need to tell life that life, I'm valuable. Even if it's a heartbreak, you tell the man that it's okay. Oh, it's your loss, but my gain. Because I am valuable. Somebody saw me and decided to die for me. I am valuable. And so the scripture in Romans 8 verse 32 says that if God could give us his only son, Jesus. Please, can you put it up? He said, I won't die with Jesus give you every other thing. And so when you go through life and you're going through the delay and you're wondering that God, what is happening? You need to rest because if he gave you Jesus, if he gave you himself, which was everything that he had, how won't he with himself give you everything that you need? And so you're saying to yourself that God, time is going. And it's like, you don't understand. I gave you myself. I am the one in control of this time. I can compress the time to favor you. 
And he was selling Mary and Martha when he got to Lazarus' tomb. He said, Jesus, oh, but why didn't you come since? He said, you don't understand. I said, I'll shut up. I am the life and the resurrection. Hallelujah. This good God that we serve. You know, I had this senior colleague that got married at, she got married at 45. And we thought that, you know, time had gone for her. Oh my God humbles people. And you know, some people in the office, they just be talking when they're not supposed to be talking. Say, so, ah, she, she was a pastor. Say, so, ah, she be a pastor. They were just saying all sorts. But by the time the Lord was going to do it, she, got, she met a, an amazing man. She got married. Two years down the line, the Lord gave her twins. Another two years, he gave her another twins. She now had four children. When she comes into the office and she carries them like this with three nannies, he said, Pepe, them. Why? Because the Lord compresses time for me. Why? I'm too valuable for him. He gave me Jesus. He gave me Jesus. If he can give me Jesus, if he can give me himself, he can sort me out. So rest. Rest. I don't know if you're a man and you're wondering, oh, I'm 45 years old. I don't have landed property. Rest. Why? Because God, if you're too valuable, you're too valuable for him not to sort you out. He says, faithful is he that has promised. If he gave you himself, be rest assured that he will give you every good thing. Somebody say amen. amen. So God values us. Somebody say God values me. That's why he came. I was too important, too heavy. So when people say, oh, they don't want you in their life, you say, don't struggle with them. It's okay, you can be going. I'm a person of value. Did you see the description? Carefully, skillfully made. I remember when I was in secondary school, they used to tell me, oh, I stopped growing. I don't know, for some reason. I just, no, I just kaput. This is a short girl. And then I then saw that Stella Bassanja was the first lady. And when I saw her height, I saw my height. I had gained boldness. When they say, oh, short guy, I said, I'm tall enough for my destiny. I told her, I said, I'm tall enough for my husband. So when my husband showed up, I was okay for him. Somebody say amen. I don't know what part of you that they are disturbing you about, but show them carefully and skillfully made. Let no man trouble me. I was carefully what and skillfully made. Hallelujah. So the second reason why Jesus came. He came to reveal himself to us. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 1 verse 1, it says that before now, in sundry time, if you can have it on the screen, it will be good. It says that, you know, I revealed myself to you by the prophets. I'm paraphrasing. It says, but now I want to reveal myself to you by myself. I want to take away the middle ground, nobody. I want you and I to be interchanging, to be in an intimate relationship. He said he came for that. And you know, for some reason, when you read the Old Testament, different things were said, you know, and it made it look as if God was a destroyer, was a killer, was a... He said, enough of that. I'm going to come by myself so that I can reveal myself to my people. Somebody say amen. amen. And so what God really is and what he has been revealing himself to us is that he's a good God. And when we say God is good and kind, we really mean that God is good and kind. And sometimes we're experiencing a delay and the devil wants us to think that God is punishing us for something. No, I don't need my neighbor's cane to flog my child. What happened to Abara? Yeah. So sometimes when the devil tells us that you say, my brother, stay your lane, day your day, let me day my day. Hallelujah. Because my God is what is good and kind to me. So he came to reveal the nature of God. That God is love. The Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. No height, no depth, no sin. And it says that for us, there is therefore no condemnation again. Why? Because nothing can separate us from the love of God. And it says to us that I have come that you will love me. Me and you and I in a love relationship. This is why he came. He came that we might know that he is our deliverer. Hallelujah. He delivered us. The Bible says that he delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. Where there's hopelessness. Where there's helplessness. Where there is pain and agony and anxiety and confusion. He came to deliver us so that we can be in the kingdom of his son. Where there is joy, peace and freedom to lift our hands and become anything that we want to be. He came to deliver us. 
Hallelujah. He says, I came so that I might destroy the works of the devil. He came to show God in his true self to us that you may know that this is who God is. Forget what the devil is saying. Forget what they said. He said, this is who I am. I am your healer. He says that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace. That means that everything that you and I needed to have peace was upon Jesus. And by his stripes we are healed. And so when you're going through different issues and the devil is trying to play in your mind because the mind is the battlefield, you're going to tell him that. I now know him. We have a relationship. That is why Jesus came. That is why he brought himself so that he can reveal himself to us. Hallelujah. So that there is no, there is no um, confusion anymore. This is who I am. I am a God of mercy. He says that my mercies are new each morning. I'm a God of compassion. I'm a God that whatever it is that you're feeling, he says that we don't have a God that is not, um, that has, that, sorry, that is not moved by the feelings of our infirmity. He says that he was tested on all ways. So when you're going through pain, he went through the pain. He came so that he can feel it, so that when you are going through it, he can support you along the way. Hallelujah. What a good God that we have. What a good God. He did all of this because of me. He had me. The Bible says that my walls are constantly before him. It's a good God. Hallelujah. Let me round up. So how do you take advantage of this birth? How do we take advantage of it? Firstly, we need to, you know, you know how I can buy... My brother here, yeah, a nice car. Or rather, I can buy him a gift or a car. And I said to him, oh, my brother, I've got you a car. And he was like, okay. So Jesus has come. God has given himself. But we're saying, okay, okay, thank you. But if he doesn't unwrap the gift or experience the gift, there is no way he can have, enjoy the fullness of the gift. And so a lot of us were coming to church, but we really haven't experienced or wrapped this person of God or this person of Christ. We haven't really, you know, experienced him. We're doing leg in and leg out. No. He says that he came so that you might have life and have it in abundance. And so how we can take advantage of it is for us to fully experience the love of God. That love that you don't need to be better to, be, to enjoy it. What a good God. And so, we need to experience the love of God. Experience the gift of Christ. And after that, we need to be mindful that someone died for you. For you and that you're not ordinary. There is nothing ordinary about you again. Now you have the Zoe life on your inside. Now that you are born of God, there is nothing ordinary about you. So maybe before you thought that you were just a random person, you know, just doing life as life will have it. There's nothing like that. Hallelujah. You carry the God on your inside now. And so you must be mindful that you are born of God. And whatever your mind is full of, that's what you produce. Amen. I mean, First John says it like this. He says that for those of us that are born of God, he says, whatsoever is born of God, he says, overcomes the world. So when you go out every day, I'm, a, I'm, I'm born of God, I, I'm an overcomer. That's a constant mindset. I'm born of God, I'm an overcomer. I'm different. I'm born of God, I'm an overcomer. No matter what the day throws at me, I am born of God, I'm an overcomer. That's the mindset. Our mind is constantly full. And you see that daily you are living the life of daily victory. Because why? You are an exception. You are not part of the masses anymore. When, the Bible says when others are saying that they are casting down. We say there is a lifting of our head. Why? Because we are born of God. Hallelujah. And then lastly, how do we take advantage? We have to spread the news. The message of Jesus you and I are here today because someone spoke to us about God. Yes, it's called carrying it forward. There is no need for a good news. It's not a good news if you're not passed on. You cannot experience Christ and you keep quiet about it. Why? The Bible says that we are the ambassadors of Christ. Hallelujah. So how do we take advantage? 
In this season of Christmas, this season that is our season, because of us, you have to share the good news. Tap your neighbor and say, share the good news. You have to share the good news. You know, the Bible says, occupy till I come. It says, make disciples of all men. It's not okay. You cannot hide God. It's not okay to hide God. It's not a secret to, it's not for some selected. It's for everyone. He said, this is my will that everyone will come to the knowledge of Christ. And we are the ambassadors of Christ. And so I don't know who you have on your phone or who you are going to see tomorrow that is anxious, that is weak, that is down, that you need to message and say, God loves you. Do a video, whatever it is. But make sure that this year does not end without you talking to somebody about Christmas, about, about Christ. Hallelujah. And even Christmas. Because Christmas is such a beautiful opportunity to explain to them. You, do you understand that I am the reason for the season? Yeah, so let me explain to you so that you can also become the reason for the season. Somebody say, talk to somebody about God. Talk to another neighbor. Yeah. Make sure that this year does not end unless you talk to somebody about God. Finally, I know I've said so already. Uh, It is possible that you, are, you, you know of this gift that has been given to us, but you haven't experienced it in the fullness of itself. You know, the love of God is so powerful that you don't need to qualify for it. All you need to do is to just identify and say, I'm ready for the love. You know, and then I remember the, the, the guy, uh, the prodigal son, the, the Bible says that the father was waiting at the window every day, waiting for him to come back. If you're watching online of your hair, and you know that really this gift has been given to me, but I'm yet to unwrap it. I'm yet to experience it. I'm yet to experience the peace. My family is yet to experience the peace because the Bible says that he is our prince of peace and the prince of wholeness. And you know that there's so much strife and fight and anxiety and uncertainty in my space. It's a good time for you to identify with this love to this today. You know, this is a good opportunity to give your life to Christ. And so if you're here with all heads bowed, all eyes closed, if you want to identify, you know, that God, I'm tired of this up and down. I'm really, I've come to the end of myself. I want to identify with you. Can you lift up your right hand as we pray together this morning? Oh, fantastic. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. So many people identify with Christ today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my brother over there. He's the one that gives you peace and makes you whole. His presence follows you everywhere that you go. Oh, can you say this with me? Heavenly Father, I accept you into my life. I, I believe with my heart that you died and you were raised to death for my justification. I denounce the work of the devil and I believe that you are my savior and I declare that forever and ever you will be my God in the name of Jesus. And so if you made that declaration, I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you. What a joy it is to be identified with you. We are grateful, Lord. Father, we thank you for the swans. We declare, Lord, new levels, new depths, new encounters in the spirit, new encounters in your word. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and glory, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus in the house today? Amen. Where well, we blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the reason for the season. O'Shea, uh -uh. you're not sounding that you are, you're not sounding like you're the reason. Because if not for you, there will be no Christmas. You are the reason for the Stop your neighbor. See, are you aware that I am the reason for the season? Amen. Please, can we give our tithes and our offerings very quickly today? If you're paying your tithe as is a custom, can you rise to your feet? If you're giving um, your tithe and your offerings online, the account details will be on your screen. Can we pray together? Supernatural Father, we thank you. What a privilege to give to the one that needs nothing. 
Lord, I speak a blessing upon this giving. And Lord, we receive the wisdom and the enablement to multiply these seeds in the name of Jesus. We declare that the devourer is rebuked for our sake. In the name of Jesus, we receive a harvest of everything that we are given today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may please have your seat. If today is your first time worshiping with us at Harvesters International Christian Center, we want to acknowledge you. We want to say thank you on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Balaji Domo and Pastor Momo Domo. We would like to welcome you and say thank you so much for deciding to be with us this Sunday morning. Please, can you raise up your hand? We would like to acknowledge you. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, I need uh, ushers over there. Thank you so much. Please, can we show them the Harvesters love? Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please fill the information with accurate details. Our pastor would like to pastor you and pray with you also. Amen. It is Christmas, right? Yes. Can somebody sing or say Christmas hymn? Not the choir. Anybody here that feel like I have a Serona's voice? Can I come to this way? Molly. Who is Molly? I can't see Molly. Oh, Molly. Ah, oh, Molly, are you? please come, come, come. Please tell him. Uh, uh, Molly, why are you? Uh, Molly is not in the spirit. He's coming. Okay. Who is, who is ready? Who is, uh, my brother over there, please, can you come? Please come, come, come. Uh, are you guys ready? All of you that have sweet voice that you don't want to sing him. It's Christmas. You know, we're going to sing to God and dance this morning. Amen. Please, can you give him a microphone? Okay, you have one. <clears throat> What's the hymn going to be like? <laughs> Please, can you celebrate him? Uh -uh. You're even queuing the... Ah, my brother, you're suspicious. Are you sure you're not part of them? E-flat. <laughs> e e e <laughs> the first Noel Come on. The Was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter night that was so deep. No. Can you celebrate it? Thank you so much. Please, can we rise to our feet as we give it up for Exalted Tribe? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like a good time to wish somebody Merry Christmas this morning. You can move around. In the spirit of Christmas, just wish somebody Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Put on your dancing shoes. Oh, you let me see you. Hey, I can see you wishing somebody a Merry Christmas this morning. Oh, you let me see you. Come on, we're about to have a Holy Ghost party in here. Hey, oh, you let me see you.
Merry Christmas. He is the reason for the season. Do you have some rice for me tomorrow? Can I come over tomorrow? Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. I'm sure they will tell you you can have my ATM card. You know, you can come over to my house tomorrow. It's sharing time. It's love sharing time. Have you been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. A couple of announcements. Please don't forget that next level prayer continues tomorrow. Hallelujah. I know it's Christmas, but the Bible said I should pray without ceasing. 
So we are pressing up tomorrow. We are praying. There are so many people out there waiting for us, waiting for God's power, waiting for a demonstration of God's power. So we are praying tomorrow in all our social media platforms. Please make sure that you join us. It's really going to be powerful. Somebody say reset. I don't know if you, do you have this on your seat? Do we have this on your seat? Hallelujah. So this card will help you. Uh, invite your friends and family. Are there people, your neighbor, that you want to invite for reset? Please help us fill this card with accurate information. There's a detachable part that you need to send to us so we can reach out to them. I can assure you that reset is going to be powerful. So for us to be able to reserve seat for them, we'd like you to help us fill this card. It's going to be overflow. It's going to be overflow. And we have enough room for everyone. Hallelujah! If you live around um, Osakba area, Chevron, Ologolo area, Aja area, Globe Moto is open for everyone that lives on that axis. Hallelujah! So have a start. We are prepared for you. Tell your number we are prepared for you. And lastly, we are looking for volunteers. We need people that can help us serve during reset. So if you want to do that, there's information that's right outside. Please help us register and we will reach out to you. Hallelujah! Somebody say wine press. Somebody say wine press. Are you ready for wine press 2024? Hallelujah. Come on, you're just waking up. Are you ready for wine press 2024? Hallelujah. If you haven't scanned the barcode already, the barcode is right on the screen. You need to plan to be at Wine Press 2024. It's happening live in TBS. We have enough room for everyone. Are you ready to close the service this morning? Can we rise up on our feet as we close the service? I want you to grab your neighbor's hand and say to them, Surely, goodness and mercy, joy and peace, greatness and power, increase and abundance, shall follow you all the days of your life and you are the dwelling house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Merry Christmas and enjoy the rest of your Sunday.